I'm Jacob, this is Kim, we're from Oricon. Um, for those who don't know Oricon, Oricon's a global engineering company, we're around 8,000 people strong. Um, and we've been on our digital transform transformation journey for about three years now. Um, and although we love trialing and testing new tech, we, we keep getting back to the point that um, it's all about the people, not the technology. So we really ensure that we strive to understand what the, what the problems are that we're trying to solve. Um, in terms of how we, we work, we work across the three horizons and we've stolen that from McKinsey. Um, it's what's happening now in horizon one, um, new, which is horizon two, and next, which is horizon three. Um, we put a bulk of effort into Horizon 1, um, and then we're trialling and testing new applications and technologies in Horizon 2 and 3, and um, seeing how they transition back to the core business, which is <coughs> generally where Kim works. Uh, we've um, set a whole culture of creative creativity and innovation through everything we do, and we've done that mainly through embedding core principles um, the one which I thought I'd speak to is this playful with serious intent. Um, and this talks to a, a whole lot of organisations we've worked with haven't gone down the, the VR or the AR road yet. And it really starts with immersing yourself with these technologies and trialling them at a, in a low risk environment, seeing what the application's like, and then scaling them up. Um, and, and key to this prototyping thing is also um, being able to collect ideas from the entire organisation. So we've um, set out a ideas um, incubator called Greenhouse where people throughout the organisation can submit their ideas and if it gets enough traction, it'll get a bit of funding. Um, you can uh, take that idea to a business case stage and um, uh, if it receives a bit of love, then it'll get a team behind it. Um, and it's, it's very much about following what we call the design wave of trialling and testing these things early and iterating. So my first example for adventures in VR doesn't start with a water example, it starts with a cycling example. Um, and for years we, we had teams that wanted to to use VR in the community engagement space, but we, we didn't know where to start. Um, so we started by putting a bike and a bike trainer on the company card. Um, and <laughs> we set up the, the VR um, Vive environment, which is up the back. Um, with the uh, example, what, what if we can use VR to imagine what it's like to be on a cycleway? Um, it got quite a bit of attention and we were, even lucky enough to get our global CEO to um, uh, to to ride the bike, um, and what we learned from this was we uh, this achieves a lot of social media attention, which is good, <laughs> um, because then what happens is people throughout the company and our clients start um, saying, "Hey, we we've got an application for this." Um, we, we can use it for a project, or um, we, we'd like to show it off at our event. Um, and, and then we go through the, um, the stage of, okay, how, how do we scale this technology? How, how do we start to tweak it and improve it? Um, and similar to Andrea's um, presentation before, starting to 3D print parts so that the equipment works better. Um, and then we start getting examples like so we're we're able to uh, take a lidar scan from a particular environment and then um, and then imagine what it's like to be on a proposed cycleway and use that for community engagement purposes um, so this example Um, so after the 2011 Christchurch earthquake, there are areas along the Avon River that were badly damaged and also sunk below sea level. So the government decided that this area shouldn't be built along again. 
um, and there was a need to remediate it, naturalize it, and prepare it against sea level rise by implementing flood protection. So it was approximately eight kilometres of river being reshaped, replanted, and regenerated into a usable community space. So Regenerate Christchurch was responsible for leading this initiative and wanted engaging experiences to help with their community feedback sessions for the area. So we developed this virtual reality kayak experience where users could paddle along the river and see some of the visions for the space. And they included some touch points where the user could experience the fauna that would come back if the area was naturalized, children playing in playgrounds, people exercising. Um, and it also included an accessibility function, which so the people with limited mobility didn't have to physically get into the kayak, but still get the same experience. And it wouldn't be possible if we didn't do the bike thing first. Um. Oh, me. So um, this was our, our water team here in Melbourne's first foray into the virtual reality space, uh, where we were designing a valve kit downstream of a connection to a reservoir. Um, so the pit was about five metres by seven and a half metres and six metres deep, and it needed to be accessible by operations and maintenance personnel. And the pipes were about uh, 1,750 <coughs> mil in <laughs> diameter, and it needed to house three manually actuated butterfly valves, and the team needed to be removable. And so we developed this model to help with the design, to help visualise the space, see how big everything was, make sure that there was enough space for people to move around, work out how access would be achieved, um, help with the positioning of the gears for the butterfly valves and work out whether or not a platform was needed inside the pit so the valves could be safely operated. And this one was an existing pump station at a treatment plant in Melbourne and these four existing pumps needed to be replaced with four new pumps. So we utilised this 3D model to s demonstrate a construction sequence where the pumps could be replaced with minimal shutdowns of the plant. And so the proposed sequence included installing a temporary bypass piping arrangement which allowed the existing pumps to operate while the new header was installed and then a temporary header was progressively removed as the new pumps were put into service. So the next example, similar to the training piece, uh, buffering, oh well. Um, we've actually got that on the VR up the back, so you can uh, see Sun, raise your hand Sun, yep, who can explain all about it, uh, fire simulation training um, for Caltex, uh, it's pretty cool, the building catches on fire, you have to bring up your P&ID diagrams and, um, and figure out how to put the fire out. Um, I, I won't give too much away. So running out of time, this particular example, um, another New Zealand example where they had an area which was impacted by the earthquake. Um, the, the area was inaccessible by um, by humans, so we had to take some drone footage of the area to figure out which parts we need to demolish. Um, so through the drone footage, we were able to extract a 3D or a photogrammetry model um, and uh, start to take some, some sections through that model uh, to figure out where the, the go and the no-go zones were. Um, and then using uh, some of the, th uh, th this is a really simple technology basically taking 360 um, photos from the site mm. um, and then giving them to the contractors so they understand which areas on the site that they demolish and so forth. But then, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, um, you can take that uh, 3D model and take it into the augmented reality environment, um, which is looking through an image in the real world. Um, and using the, the HoloLens, the contractors could stand around the model and start to um, plan out their, their day or week ahead um, without actually having to visit the site. Um, and then again, similar to with the CEO example, you get your client in the room and you take a photo and you share it. And this guy is the only guy who seems to make the HoloLens goggles look small. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 
So this isn't a technology that we have developed. It's come out of the States Columbia University, but luckily enough, they've open sourced it. So we were able to get a list of hardware from them, um, as, as well as an instruction manual of how to put the sandbox together. Um, and it's basically projecting down and using a Microsoft Connect um, to see what, what's happening on the sand. But then... So where we used it was again for that Avon River uh, regeneration as a, an educational tool. So as that land had sunk below sea level, it was uh, used to teach the community about flood protection and the impact of rising sea levels. And so a timber mould of the riverway was made with the sand around it and people could shape the land trying to build flood protection. And then every 90 seconds a flood would be simulated and you could see what the effects were if you hadn't built the pr flood protection properly. And we're definitely out of time now, but this is my favourite, and it's not a water example, but we've been um, trialling within our building, which we're using as a test lab for these sort of technologies, um, how we can combine the, uh, the 3D model with AR. Um, and you've got the ability to um, start to show either the, the point cloud data or the 3D data, um, and then click it, click it, click it services that exist behind the walls um, and we're starting to do a lot of work with surveying uh, buildings before they clad up the walls so we have proper as-builts. I've run out of time. This one's fantastic though. Just one more. Uh, <laughs> so this is with a, a water-based uh, agency in Melbourne. Uh, we've got a whole lot of CCTV footage um, where we've got a team of people within our machine learning lab who are taking CCTV footage um, and then uh, taking frames and saying what's a normal or not a normal pixel. Um, and then we can, uh, we can continuously use these algorithms to detect for defects within the pipes and then it, it, uh, it, it measures them on this threshold so that rather than wane, um, viewing 24 hours of footage, um, we, we can splice that down to a couple of hours and they just view where the, uh, the defect areas are. Got a whole lot of stuff, got a blog, there's lots of ideas, but thank you very much. <laughs>